Hey, how's it going? It's Joe from Townsend Tours and it's time for another update. This video is mainly gonna go over my road trip to Sydney for, for New Year's. But before that, I'm gonna go over what I did in the time period leading up to that because the last video was recorded just before Christmas. So I'll breeze through all of that and then I'll go into more detail about Sydney. I'm probably gonna speak pretty fast because I wanna try and get the pre-Sydney stuff done in about two or three minutes. So sorry if I'm speaking too fast and hopefully I don't miss out any or too many details. With that being said, here we go. A couple of days before Christmas, I tried to make it to the Heidi Museum of Contemporary Art. I didn't make it. I ended up falling in the River Yarra because I'm a genius and I thought I could cross a broken tree in the middle of a river. Luckily, I was the only thing that got drenched. My camera, my phone, all of that stayed dry and I spent most of the day just walking it off, getting dry and I ended up about five kilometers away from where I was actually trying to go. On Christmas Eve, I was rushing around buying last minute gifts as you do and on Christmas Day, I spent it with my housemate and his daughter. We had a meal at our house, and then we went over to a neighbor's house to have a gathering with them. It was my first Christmas away from my family, so I Skyped them in the evening, so I, get, so I got to speak to them on Christmas Day. On Boxing Day, I made it to the Heidi Museum of Contemporary Art. It's a beautiful place. There's uh, three main buildings. It used to be a farmhouse that they converted into a gallery, and I also spotted my first wild snake. At first I thought it was like a hoax. I saw a sign saying caution and snake seen recently. I thought either it was fake or someone had forgotten it from a previous day. Turns out it was real and it was recent. There was a few people standing next to a bit of grass looking at it and I thought, ah, oh, that must be the snake. So I went over to try to take some photos. I didn't know how close I could get because I didn't know if it was harmless or one of the deadly ones. I thought it couldn't be deadly because why on earth would those people be standing that close to a deadly snake? So I took some photos and then later on when I showed my housemate the picture, he said he thought it was a brown snake. And I thought, oh, okay, um, is that one of the harmless ones? And he, he just laughed at me and went, no, that's like one of the deadly ones. And so I was relieved that I, I wasn't dead. And after that, that was the 26th Boxing Day. On the 27th, didn't really do much. I was preparing things for my friend arriving. He was arriving on the 28th because it's my birthday. He'd flown in from London. He arrived at seven o'clock in the morning. He was meant to get there at six, but his flight got delayed. So luckily for me, I got a lane. Well, a lane till seven. And we went to the beach because I didn't know how jet lagged he would be. So I thought, oh, we'll go to the beach. He can sleep if he needs to, or if not, we can have a swim, do whatever. And I went to Brighton Beach because I'd never been there before. And they have loads of beach huts that are all painted with different designs, logos, all different colors. And it started to rain about halfway through. So we got home and got changed to go out for the evening. We went to a pizza place that served the best pizza in the world. I don't think the one that I had was the best pizza in the world, but basically in 2014, the owner of the restaurant won best pizza in the world at the World Pizza Championships. Sounds fake, but actually is real. He went out to Parma, Italy and competed and he won it. I don't know whether it's made by the same person or stands a slip, but it was my mouth was on fire and, I, and it was it was good but it wasn't great and after that we went to a, a rooftop bar to have a couple of drinks celebrate my birthday my friend's jet lag was really kicking in and he was nodding off every two minutes he was just on the train on the tram and every, everywhere so we had to go home early but that wasn't too big of a deal because we had to get up early the next day anyway we had tickets for day four of the cricket the ashes test in melbourne and we tried to get there early, or tried to get there as soon as possible because we knew there wouldn't be much of an opportunity to watch England batting because we knew Jimmy Anderson was starting. And as we got to the stadium, the announcer said, England all out, first ball. So, just our luck. Uh, we didn't get to see much of, much of the cricket because there was a, lot of, a few rain delays. And it, it was okay, it was a good atmosphere though, and I really enjoyed the, the general day out. And then we had to walk for a thunderstorm just to get home. And the 30th was the start of the road trip. We had rented out a car to drive up to Sydney for New Year's. The issue was I was the only driver out of the two of us and I hadn't driven since I passed my test about three years ago. And I was a bit worried about how well it would go. Some of my friends thought I was mad for even trying it. It wasn't too bad. I struggled at the start. I even had to have the guy show me how to switch on certain things. And we were parked right at the 
exit, so I had to kind of rush out because I was blocking off other people. It wasn't the smoothest of drives at the start, but over time I got used to it and gradually got better, and I had plenty of time to improve because it was a 10 hour journey after all. We stopped off about every three hours and arrived in Sydney at nine o'clock-ish. We sat down, relaxed, had something to eat and just had an early night because we needed to get up early to queue for the fireworks. We got up about seven o'clock in the morning and made our way into the city to the Royal Botanical Gardens as we were watching the fireworks from Mrs. Macquarie's point. It was about a 30 minute walk from the train station to the garden. So we got to see a few of the Sydney sites, including Sydney Tower, Hyde Park and St. Mary's Cathedral. We arrived around 9 a.m. and got in the queue which turned into a stampede uh, when, when the gates opened. It started off as a queue and we were waiting there in it for about 30 minutes to an hour, but as soon as the gates opened, everybody just started charging forward because there were no barriers to stop anybody. The stewards came in to try and clear some space, but they couldn't. They even got in the police at one point to, to try and move people, but nobody could move. Some people were even fainting in the middle of the crowd because it was too hot. We eventually got through the bottleneck and joined the next part of the queue to get through to Mrs. Macquarie's point. Once there, we had a quick look around, uh, picked our spot and just hung out there for the rest of the day. We had a few drinks and we watched the air show that started about seven o'clock. There was also a small fireworks display at nine o'clock and a little light show before the main fireworks at midnight. So what I'm gonna do is pause the video or kind of stop talking uh, for now, just to show you how my 2018 kicked off by showing you some of the footage of the fireworks. And then I'll join back in about a minute's time to just carry on talking to you about Sydney. back to me. On New Year's Day we had a bit of a line having not got home until late and started to make our way around Sydney. We started off in Darling Harbour with a quick detour past the Chinese Garden of Friendship. It cost about six dollars to go in and neither of us wanted to pay that so we we didn't and we didn't go in. A couple of girls snuck through the barriers saying Haha, we got through for free um, but we weren't that fast and just took a couple of photos from the outside. The harbour itself was a sleek modern harbour, it was really windy, we went across the bridge that cuts across the harbour and made our way to the Sydney Opera House. We had to go through the botanical gardens again to get there, it was, it was good to see some other parts of the park outside of the small section that we were in for the fireworks. We walked past a music festival going into the gardens and we could hear it pretty much the whole way, um, the whole way through. We saw a wide range of beautiful flowers and there was a big tree towards the end. As soon as we walked past it, everything opened up and we could see the Opera House. It was an amazing experience to be able to see one of the world's most famous buildings up close. I took lots of pictures before we made our way uh, to the Harbour Bridge. Whilst walking around the harbour, we could see plenty of jellyfish in the water. It wasn't a long walk to the bridge and going across it was exciting because it offered spectacular views of the city. We ended up crossing it about four times that day, as one time we crossed it by foot to get to Luna Park. Then we got the train back to get the bus to Manly Beach. Manly Beach was crazy busy. In some places there were more there was more people than sand. We got to see some of the surfers there before making the hour and a half journey back to our Airbnb to rest up before making the journey back to Melbourne. The journey back was long, well longer than the journey there but we got to stop off at a couple of places on the way got to see the sydney olympic stadium and canberra the capital of australia that meant that we'd crossed three three states in one day so that's new south wales the australian oh, what was it capital territory and victoria 
and on the way back it was creeping into night time and it was the first time that I'd driven in the night so that was an experience I just had to concentrate more than I, I, I did during the day and that's pretty much where I'm gonna leave this video. The next video will be about our road trip along the Great Ocean Road, so hopefully you've liked this video. If you do, just give it a thumbs up. If you wanna drop a comment, you're more than welcome to. If you wanna follow me, you can always subscribe or you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the whole shebang. And you've also got my website at www.townsendtours.com where I post daily updates and other little tidbits. So thank you very much for watching this video and just remember, explore and enjoy.